Welcome to another edition of Small Talk for You. This morning I wanted to take a look at querying data out of a database using Glorp. So we're in VA, and I've already added a bunch of new things. What I did is I went ahead and added Wilma 1 through 10 to the database, so that if I do this, I have already connected to this database as well. So if I do this, EMPS gets session read the EMP. Let's just do that, inspect this, and you see I have my collection here. And I've added a print on so you can see I've got all the various Wilmas there. And then at the bottom I've got the FRED that I added. So you see I have 11 entries in the database. And that's the simplest way to read all of the instances of a given class out. Once you set up the kind of structure we did last time with the Glorp descriptor, you can then tell your session to read a class. And it's the same as doing select star from. In fact, if you go up here to the transcript since I've turned logging on, you can see that it's more or less doing a select star. It's just specifying the variables because it's going to bind those to your instance variables. Now you can also do read many of, which is the same as doing read colon. This will read all of them again, so if I do an inspect, you'll get all of them out. However, you can specify more simple things. You can do queries where you have a where clause. The where clauses are kind of interesting in Glorp. When you do this read one of or read many of, you're doing a where clause which is a block, but in that block you can put small talk in a constrained fashion. What you can do is your where clause has to have things that refer specifically to the instance variables of the class, because that's what the query has to consist of. And there's a limited set of selectors you can use, basically equal to, greater than, less than, not equal to, and is nil and not nil. But notice the caps here, because they're specific to Glorp, so that the Glorp parser will pick those up and create a proper where clause out of it. So you can also look at object expression, which is a class, which you can look at all of the other things you can put into a where clause. So it can get a little hairy, but you should just look at all of those examples. And in fact, one of the classes you should look at closely is Glorp Session to see the various APIs. Notice that I have read, read limit, so I can limit the answers that come back. Read ordered by, so that I can order my answers. So you can do most of the things you would think you could do with SQL in a kind of small talky way. So here, let's do this one, read one of where the first name is Fred. We should just get one instance. And you notice that we get an instance, not a collection, because we told it to read one of. Whereas if we go down here, read many of, and we're also going to limit this to Fred. So let's go ahead and see what we get back here. It's going to be a similar result, but it's a collection because we told it to read many of them. Now let's try this, read many of with Barney, and see what we get. So if you do a selection that shouldn't return anything at all, you get what you expect, an empty collection. So you get the kinds of results you want. Here's this not nil. So return everything where the first name's not nil. Now I haven't got any null data. This is this will map a nil or not nil maps to null columns in the database. So let's go ahead and do this. And again, I'm going to get everything because I have none that match that. And if you want to do a like kind of query, where you're going to do matching, this is very SQL-like. First name like colon Wilma percent. So you're using SQL syntax here, using percent instead of asterisk. And you can do queries like this to return the 10 that don't have Fred in them, because I have Wilma 1 through 10 here. So that's how you do a like query. So you can do all the various kinds of things you want to do. You just have to remember the restrictions on the where clause, which is documented either in the Glorp documentation that comes with VA Smalltalk, or you can go to glorp.org and look it up there. And you should also, again, take a look at Glorp session. So that's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with whatever Smalltalk you're using.